Thanks be to you, O oh God, that we have risen this day to the rising of this life itself. Be the purpose of God between us and each purpose, the hand of God between us and each hand, the pain of Christ between us and each pain, the love of Christ between us and each love. O oh God, who brought us to the bright light of this new day, bring us renewed faith for the living of this day and fill us with the guiding light of eternity. Let us pray together. We come before you, O oh God, in Easter joy, seeking to be your people of the resurrection. Be known among us. Grant us the assurance of your presence, your love, and your renewing power. Through your word and spirit, reveal to us your purpose in our lives. Light our way, God, we pray, for we are pilgrims on the road with the risen Jesus. Amen. Let us open us now to the word of God, reading together responsively Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for the Lord has done marvelous things. The right hand and the holy arm of the Lord have secured the victory. The Lord has made known this victory and has openly showed righteousness in the sight of the nations. The Lord remembers mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel, and all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. 
Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the sovereign, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord, who is coming to judge the earth. In righteousness shall the Lord judge the world and the peoples with equity. And continuing now in the New Testament, let us listen for God's word to us this day, coming to us from Luke Luke's Gospel, the sixth chapter, verses 12 to 27 and verse 31. Now during those days, Jesus went out to the mountains to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And when day came, Jesus called his disciples and chose 12 of them, whom he also named apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James, and John, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Jesus came down the mountain with the twelve, and he stood then on a level place, with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear Jesus and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch Jesus for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when you all speak well, and when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Do to others as you would have them do to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we have received God's good news through words of Holy Scripture, let us also go now to seek to hear the voice of God through the contemporary witness of other Christians. Before these two readings, a brief word. 
last week due to the intense storms on that Sunday and Monday, we were unable to hold this midday prayer service because the church's soundboard was actually destroyed. Challenges upon challenges in this uncertain time, yes, for us all. The writing of theologian and Presbyterian minister, Dr. Martha Scholl Gillis, reflects on the brokenness of our lives amidst the power of Christ's cross and resurrection. And as I prepared for today and was drawn back to this reading, which I chose for this service and typed, yes, myself, last week amidst the challenges and uncertainties that were so very present and are so still. I discovered my own brokenness amid two glaring typos. With apologies to Martha, I read this excerpt aloud, claiming again my own fragility and inviting you to claim yours inviting us all to claim our own brokenness in light of the ongoing transforming power of Christ's cross and resurrection to make all things new. Hear Dr. Gillis's words, and may we too resurrect the atonement. May God resurrect the atonement in the center of our own lives. The cross must remain at the center of our theology as the act in which God compassionately takes our brokenness and violence and mysteriously absorbs them into God's own self in order to transform them in the power of reconciling love this transformation makes possible a new way of life. The power God reveals on the cross does not languish before evil, but has the strength to absorb it and to replace it with something new. God offers this strength and this love back to us as a gift of resurrection peace, of resurrection grace. We experience this grace, this peace, already in the present time and in fullness in the promised reign of God. So it is not a matter of enduring suffering and sacrifice now, because we are promised that things will get better in the future, but it is precisely the truth that things are better now because Christ has risen and Christ's ongoing transformation of the world calls us to active participation. And let us listen now for God's voice coming through a Christian sister, Anna May Say Pa, Christian in Burma, now called Myanmar, a country where so much tragic hate and suffering, persecution and death for Christians and Muslims has been going on for years and continues now. Hear her poem, her own faith response to the life death, and resurrection of Christ. She calls it for the people. If I were a bird and able to fly afar, I would be, I would like to be, a white dove to guide the people to freedom. If I were a grain of sand, I would throw myself down to make a path for the people. If I were the cloud in the sky, I would shelter and bring rains to the rice field. 
I would sacrifice my life for the suffering people. I would sacrifice myself no matter how many times I would have to die. So let us all pause now in a moment of silence to reflect on our own lives and to reflect on the power of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for us within us, Christ's power calling us to sacrifice and service ourselves in and for our own time. As we prepare to go to God now in prayer, I invite us to join together first in our printed prayer, followed by a time for our personal prayers of need and of intercession for ourselves, for those we love, for our church, our community, our country, and the world. So let us come with our hearts open acknowledging how they are often closed. May we come now with our hopes, acknowledging those places within us that are without hope and are in despair. Following our silent time for personal prayers and feel free at home or wherever you are to speak your own prayers aloud to God who hears all our prayers. Following that time, I will continue with an adaptation of a prayer written by Lutheran pastor and well-known preacher and author, Nadia Boltz Weber. Then together we will join our hearts as one in the Lord's Prayer. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray together. We gather here in your presence, God, in our need and bringing with us the needs of the world, we come to you, for you come to us in Jesus, and you know by experience what human life is like. We come with our faith and with our doubts. We come without hopes and with our fears. We come as we are because you invite us to come and you have promised never to turn us away. Hear us now, O oh God, as each of us lifts up in our own way from our hearts, our souls, our voices, our prayers of need, of supplication, and of intercession.
we be still and know that you are God. May we know that you hear and receive our prayers and answer them with your divine wisdom and your holy will. And lead us, O oh God, into active participation in the cross of Christ and in his resurrection given for us all. For those, dear God, who are giving birth alone, we pray. And for the mothers of Tete Province in Mozambique, as they give birth with even less medical care, hear our prayers. For those who are grieving amidst this pandemic without their people, for the beleaguered parents who ran out of creative ideas two weeks ago. For those who don't know where this week's grocery money will come from. For everyone who has watched the date of their wedding or of their graduation or their birthday or their long hoped for vacation or their family reunion or the non-essential procedure they hoped would change their lives for all that we have watched come and go. We lift up our prayers. For the exhausted and the despairing, we pray, O oh God, asking that your comfort, your presence, and your peace be felt and if that's not possible, God, could you just nudge the right person to reach out and call them? Just that, Lord, just that. Oh, holy God, nudge us and hear our praise. Hear our praise for the animals who get to have their people home all day. Hear our praise for a slow enough life that allows for baking in a garden and the use of cloth napkins. For the comfort of sweatpants. For the bursts of creativity that keep coming from artists and musicians and writers for the people on Instagram who are getting us through this, for those keeping us dancing, keeping us laughing, keeping us loving. And for the journalists who just keep going so we can be informed, we thank you, God. For the gratitude shown for health workers and grocery store cashiers and delivery folks, and for those two rolls of toilet paper provided by a neighbor as a gift. For the things we no longer take for granted, oh God, our hearts overflow with thanks. And for Jesus Christ, oh God, your Son, our Lord, who is behind us, above us, beside us, and within us, for Jesus Christ, who is accompanying us every step of the way and every day and night through this pandemic, we give you our thanks and praise, O oh God, for him. Hear us now as we join together in the prayer Jesus taught us to say, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>
May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The peace of Christ be with you all and also with you. Go now in peace and share Christ's peace with all the world. Amen.